Lissandro Martinez, Manchester United are on the verge of getting the here we go from Fabrizio Romano. And Eric Ten Hag is going to get the progressive ball-playing centre-back that he really wants at Manchester United. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through the scout report on Lissandro Martinez. Exactly what sort of player is he? Why is Ten Hag wanting to spend 50, 55 million euros on a player from the Eredivisie? Is he the defender that's going to sort our problems? Let me run through all of it and explain it in detail in this video. So please drop a like on the video if you do enjoy it. Drop a like for Lissandro Martinez and make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Because I do put a lot of effort into these videos. I'd love to have you as part of the community going forward. Hit the notification bell as well. Why not? I want to say a quick shout out to crossbarhub.com uh, for a couple of the, the graphics that I'm using inside this. But it's important to understand exactly what sort of centre-back Martinez is. Because there's very different types of centre-back. Compared to Koulibaly, who's going to Chelsea... Martinez is a different breed. And if you take a look at his pizza chart, now the pizza chart here, basically the further towards the outside, the better it is. The higher the percentile, the better he is compared to other centre-backs inside the Eredivisie. And what you can see from reading this, he is arguably the best ball-playing centre-back inside the Eredivisie. Go down here to look at his pass percentage at 83 percentile. That's not incredible. Pass efficiency, 96 percent. 96 percentile. But look, final third entries, balls into the final third. There's literally nobody better than Lissandro Martinez. Progressive carries. There's pretty much literally nobody better than Lissandro Martinez. In terms of turnovers, he loses the ball on certain occasions and defensive actions. He's a defender, yes. But the reason that Eric Ten Hag is signing him first and foremost, of course he's signing him as a defender. You don't sign a centre-back who's not a defender. But it's everything else that comes with his game. Because look at his tackles, you know, 90th percentile, very good. Tackle percentage, one versus dribbling, nearly one of the best. Interceptions, decent. Clearances, not many, because he's not really that sort of defender who's going to sit really deep and just bomb the ball forward. That's not what he does. But look at that. The aerial win percentage I thought was very interesting. 93.7%. Because so many people want to say, why are we signing a five foot nine centre back? And I keep saying it's not the size of the centre back, it's the athleticism of the centre back. And Lissandro Martinez is somebody who's known for having a very strong leap, someone who's very tenacious, very aggressive in his playing style. And there's a lot to love about him. So I don't think the area will be that much of a problem. I'm sure some people will try to expose it. But hell, we've had massive centre-backs and we're still conceding from corners and set pieces. So height isn't everything at United. Jeez. But look at that there. That's probably one of the most important ones. The attacking value added. How important has Lissandro Martinez been to Ajax going forward? There's basically nobody better than him. And when you take a look at his stats, it all becomes obvious. Again, this is basically an extension of this chart here but in sort of a graph instead. Look at these numbers. Passes attempted, 99th percentile. Passes completed, 95th percentile. Progressive passes, 99th percentile. Progressive carries, 96th percentile. And tackles, he loves a tackle. Look at that, assist, 90. It's Green City around here. Lissandro Martinez is a ball-playing not attack-minded, but gifted going forward. He's great with the ball at his feet. And if you're looking at the problem that we saw straight away for Eric Ten Hag inside that game against Liverpool, it's the fact that we had, was it Varane and Lindelof? Lindelof's a good passer. But we, we need somebody who operates in one of those two positions and really can, with confidence and consistency, progress that ball forward. And that's exactly where and why Lissandro Martinez has been signed. If you take a look at this graph as well, that sort of shows his heat map for his passing, where his defensive duels are. I mean, it's obvious he's a left centre back, right? That's where he plays. So that, I suppose, didn't tell us too much altogether. But I'm really genuinely and very excited for Lissandro Martinez. I've gone a little bit too far there. And I really think you will be after you watch this video too. Now, what I want to do here quickly is take a look at his heat maps and compare it on a season by season basis because I know a lot of you will know. Sandro Martinez, he's a left centre-back. Yeah, sure, but he can play left-back. And he can also play defensive midfield. And you know full well how much I think we need to sign a defensive midfielder. So let's quickly take a look at the heat maps across the three seasons that he spent at Ajax and compare them. 
This one here, the most recent season, you can see, man, you can see how progressive and how forward. But he's doing this from a centre back. Look, this is last season at Ajax. Every single game he played at centre back. Yet look at his chart. Of course, you're playing in an Ajax team which dominates the ball, dominates possession, and plays with an extremely high line. But look how much he's in the opposition's half. That's incredible. If we were to go back now and we would take a look at the season before, he's played left back seven times, 34 times as a centre back. And we were to compare that heat map, we can see it's a little bit less intense. He's, he's not going forward as much. That's surprisingly so. Actually, you think he'd go forward a little bit more at left back. But I think the one that you're all going to be curious about, understandably so, is the first season when he went to Ajax. When he played more games as a defensive midfielder than he did play as a centre back in the Eredivisie and of course you can see that he's a little bit more progressive and the heat map slightly further up the pitch but I'll be honest not that much further up the pitch if anything it's just a little bit more central which you I suppose you can presume because you're playing as a defensive midfielder but Lissandro Martinez is somebody who will definitely bring steel he's known as a pit bull He's somebody who's going to be aggressive, but aggressive with intent, not just angry and aggressive and shouting and not winning the ball. As, it, as, I, as I showed you here by looking at these, the 99th percentile for tackles won in the Eredivisie last. No, actually, not in the Eredivisie. All centre-backs. 99th percentile. This guy wins tackles. This guy progresses the ball. I cannot wait to see this signing get completed. I think it's going to be a pretty transform... Not as transformative as um, Frankie de Jong will be, I think, for Manchester United. And I've maintained that since day one. <clears throat> but in terms of the profile of the players, Tyro Malassia is the word that Eric Ten Hag's used quite a lot, the profile of that player. Lissandro Martinez and the profile of him bring so much to this United team that it doesn't have. Now, in terms of what position he's going to be used in, I think it, it, it seems to me quite straightforward. I would absolutely expect Martinez to come in and play as our left centre-back. The question therefore remains, what happens between Varane and Maguire? Now, I don't particularly know about that. Because of the two, if you're looking at who's probably the better centre-back, I don't really think it's a question. It's Champions League Varane. And you're on paper, you're saying, well, that's probably going to be Manchester United's best partnership. The partnership which with that wait, Varane was great on the ball as well. And Varane can play that high line. Those two could play such a high aggressive line and cover the space in behind. But of course, we don't know what's going on with Varane's injuries. We don't know whether or not Maguire is going to be played in because he's the captain. So you may well see that. But in terms of suiting the style of Eric Ten Hag, where he wants to play with his centre-backs, probably their line around about there, ideally, that doesn't suit Maguire as much as it suits Varane. But of course... There is the possibility that this happens. And this is what I mean about him bringing some versatility into this and maybe working inside a position where we, Christ, we need some strengthening. Because Martinez could, in theory, play there alongside whoever it is, Scott McTominay or Fred. He could operate as that left central, left central midfielder, defensive midfielder. And then what you could be looking at there, in theory, is this. Martinez working alongside De Jong in midfield. Martinez being, De Jong being the player who would sort of drop there. Um, it, when, when the fullbacks go aggressive, say like, hypothetically here, Shaw's going up and Delo's going up and the two centre-backs are there, he would kind of drop in and become a third centre-back to receive the ball. He'd be the playmaker. Martinez would be the man tasked with winning the ball back and getting it to De Jong as soon as possible. But I just... My gut is telling me I think we'll probably see Martinez more in a left centre-back position. But I do find it quite exciting and quite interesting for the fact that we don't know that for sure. And that there is every chance that he may well be moved into midfield. I just don't particularly know that. As it stands, I think it's probably going to be those two with Martinez there. There's question marks around the partner for, for Martinez. I think he's going to come in. I think he will be a starter. We're not signing 50 million euro Martinez, who was a big player, massive player, not physically massive, uh, for Eric Ten Hag in the Eredivisie and just putting him on the bench for Varane and Maguire. That won't happen. So it's up to Ten Hag to decide, A, who his partner's going to be. He does play there. Or B, whether he plays in midfield. He can do both. But Ten Hag's already spoken about um, Martinez previously and said, look, 
he doesn't quite have the stamina to play in midfield. So I'd be kind of surprised if he was to play in this, given that he's thrived and grown into this one of the best centre-backs in world football at progressing the ball, at bringing it forward. As this chart shows there, you can see that attacking value added. 99.8% percent percentile. So much percentiles going on. He's going to really change our build-up play from the back. De Gea, giving the ball to Martinez, he can run through. He can dribble the ball at his feet. He can progressively carry the ball forward. He'll find his teammates. And if he doesn't, he's a top-level tackler. He's someone who's aggressive and someone who gives 100% every time he plays. That's something that all Ajax fans have said. So I'm excited to see this signing completed. I really am. I think this is a big, big signing. Him alongside De Jong changes the whole shape of how Manchester United play out from the back with the ball. That's what Ten Hag needs and Ten Hag wants to do. So you can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I hope you've learned a little bit more about Martinez. If you have, make sure you drop a like on the video and make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. I'm looking forward to seeing him play for the club. Looking forward to seeing this deal getting done. Take it easy, everyone. I'll speak to you soon.